All right, hey guys, welcome back to the AVGL College Division for here for our Black Ops 3. Of course, we have a ton of games going on in this college, you know, a whole bunch of games going on. If you're interested, go to avglcollege.org and keep up with all the action. But we're going to be hopping into our third map of Texas A&M versus North Texas. And, I mean, Jen, it's easy to say that I think Texas A&M is going to take this pretty easily. Yeah, and uh, we're seeing the same bands sort of coming in from the last match. And if you're North Texas, you want to start doing some targeted bands, possibly some of the weapons that UNM was using last round, like, I guess, M8s, things like that. Just try and do some target bands. This is sort of the same things we're seeing again. Overdrive and Kinetic Armor, some interesting bands coming through. Those are the most obvious specialists you're going to want to take out of the uh, Something we've been seeing all night. The only thing I... Only thing I think we ever saw protected was the gravity spikes in that first hard point, which is interesting. But pretty standard bands, you know, and you have to say that's not really great for North Texas, who really need to find the strengths that Texas A&M has been using to just, you know, demolish them so far in the series and be able to, you know, take those out of the equation so that maybe they can pull together this uplink and start getting some momentum in their favor. So we're done with the bands there. Like you said, nothing too crazy. And we're going to be moving right into who really need to find the strengths that Texas A&M has been using to just, you know, demolish them so far in the series and be able to, you know, take those out of the equation so that maybe they can pull together this uplink and start getting some momentum in their favor. So we're done with the bands there. Like you said, nothing too crazy. And we're going to be moving right into the specialist draft. And uh, I guess the last thing that we might have missed is the Blast Suppressor Ban, which uh, in an uplink you don't typically see because that's more of something you'd want to take out in SMD where you want that information of where the players are on the map. But of course that is certainly going to help to see where players are around the map, of course. Now heading into the Specialist Draft, we're going to see already a mirrored Psychosis pick from Rochette and Macon Bacon. And of course, you guys didn't know from the patch that just happened, the earn rate of Psychosis did increase. So this might be a more viable choice. Of course, the Sparrow coming out of Miguel, that also got a nice buff. I believe that the uh, the accuracy and things like that and the amount of shots were increased. The Ripper out of Skater, um, not a typical specialist that you might use in Uplink, but like we've said in the last Uplink, you could equip the Ripper while holding the drone, which allows you a little bit of a fighting chance when you're in close quarter situations. Tempest out of Enemy, another interesting uh, weapon choice, either Annihilator or Tempest, along with the Scythe, are your main weapons you're going to want to use. Combat focus. That's uh, that's kind of that's weird. Curious. Yeah, that's, that's uh, curious. I mean, <laughs> you know, we were saying North Texas needs to change some things up, but I guess that's their plan is hit them with some score streaks, I guess. I mean, we'll we'll see. I don't mean the combat focus pick is very strange to say the least. But hey, if it's what you know they're used to running, you know, like we said, we're looking for them to pull out some strats. Baby combat focus is it. I mean it doesn't really sound like it, but you never know with these amateur teams. Of course. And we're seeing the uh, two weapon uh, combo coming out of I believe that's Texas U a &M on the right and on the left side we just have the uh, Sparrow and Ripper combo which is sort of the unperformable a lot of the Ripper tonight yeah I don't know if this is uh, just something I a, a strategy I don't know of course I've never seen people really use the Ripper in the pro league of course and neither the Sparrow you've seen a couple pro players here and there use it and these really really uh long lane sort of control areas but in a breach uplink it's so fast paced it's such a mall map and you're gonna want these subs and these at least something like a scythe you gotta have a scythe at least on breach uplink to post up on top ac or top broken that's the way better specialist to use out of the sparrow or the ripper and i mean maybe you'd go with the sparrow or the ripper if really everything else is banned but those are just the most unpreferable specialists you're gonna want to use yeah i mean like you said we'll see if north texas is able to pull anything out uh you know Texas A&M and that hard point, you know, that first respawn, they were just completely set up. They had all of their strategies just completely locked down. They, you know, were able to lock out North Texas from barely scoring a point. I mean, they weren't getting scrap time. They weren't getting rotating time. They weren't getting really much of anything. But, you know, it's time for this uplink, and we're going to be hopping into this pretty soon as the match loads up, and we'll see if North Texas can keep this series alive. Okay, here we go. The last seconds while this loads up, we're going to be seeing 
you know, like we said, North Texas, this is their last shot right now in this series to make anything happen. I mean, nothing has happened. So 20 seconds until this game starts, you know, Jen, what do you think North Texas needs to do to stay in this? Well, I mean, they could have started with a better specialist draft, of course. Like I've already mentioned, the combat focus. Uh, I believe somebody on North Texas did pick that, if I could remember yeah, who that's it was. Yeah, that's Ninja with the combat focus and the KN-44 extended fast mags. Yeah, so some interesting picks. I mean, combat focus can be useful. It helps you get score streaks faster. But, of course, when you can barely hit 10 kills on a respawn, it's not really something you want to focus on. You want to get these high, higher killing specialists, of course, like the scythe and things like that. However, we're already going to see a bloodbath in the middle of the map. Three players of North Texas are going to go down. McGill first on the drone. He's going to drop. The enemy is going to recover that. He's going to head right into this bottom broken area, leading the charge, of course. Needs his teammates to slay out this base a little bit first, of course, getting a few kills there. He even gets one of his own. Now he's able to charge into this base pretty much uncontested. Of course, these players from North Texas are spawning out, not really opting to uh, go back to their base to clear it out. They're just going to um, overextend back to the middle of the map to try and make some objective happen. But they got slain out there as well, so North Texas not having the best structure here on the sublink. Yeah, Ninja in a solid position for some defense, but I mean, that was a whole clip to take out one person. That's not the type of accuracy you want to have to really hold down his base. And, you know, Macon Bacon's gonna grab the drone and run around that right side, and look at that, there is nobody in North Texas' base. One player's finally gonna rotate around, but will he have the shots to pick him up in time? No, he won't. That armor will be enough. Macon Bacon able to even pick up one more before Beastly Ninja finally comes in and takes him out and just like that AM are looking for a solid relay enemies pushing up with slightly to see if they can score this slightly will just dunk that right in 5-0 already a minute and a half into the first round and of course you know AM is on preferable side of course so they're you're just going to expect them to score a lot more on this side however 5-0 with only a minute and a half into the game this is going to be probably an even worse bloodbath than we saw in our first matchup exil getting another two point play on the board currently seven and oh, a and you know, there's still one player with no kills. That's Rashad. Three go down for North Texas. And also a and have some specialists on the board. You got the Psychosis out of Macon Bacon. The enemy has the Tempest as well. Macon Bacon charging into that North Texas base. Actually going to activate that Psychosis. Great play by him. Exil with the two-piece. Another two-point play on the board. Currently 9-0. and oh. Yeah, I want to highlight Rashad. Uh, he's just sitting in the Texas a and base, which, uh, interesting strategy. You know, I, I mean, it's a good idea if you're trying to get Relay there, is able to pick up one on Axe Wheel, but, you know, he was really just kind of completely away from his team and unable to do anything. Slightly has the ball, and they're going to be trying to push back up to make this 11 or 10 to 0. And, oh, does a weird 360, goes for the melee, throws it away, and then gets taken out finally, but the ball is still on North Texas's side, making Bacon going to grab it. Nade's going to come in, going to try to dodge those and survive those. He's running through, his teammates are occupying North Texas, and he just gets the easy throw. That's 10-0 already. And we're halfway through our first side. North Texas really needs to change some things right now. You know, I think the key to this is going to be Skater. He's 8-7 and seven right now. He's the only player on his team that's positive. Is able to pick up the kill on the carrier. Enemy, though, with the Tempest already, pushing up into the base. As we say that, though, Ninja does have the ball, and he is pushing around. You see those Texas A&M players... <laughs> frantically rotating back and they will easily get back to him oh but the ball falls right off the map so that will reset making bacon and slightly pushing through this left side to get back to the mid and they're gonna oh take down gets the lucky shot on psychosis right away and you know gets the right one the first try i mean that was a Nice try by BC Ninja. You know, he had absolutely no teammates with him, but just North Texas needed to put some points on the board here. It's currently 10-0, and he was actually getting quite close, but with no teammates, he was completely surrounded. He's going to try here once again, currently 4-10. and 10. Has some players from A&M, but he's going to get shot in the back here, and also Exil's uh, sentry in the middle of the map is wreaking some havoc. Macon Bacon's going to recover that drone. Three go down for North Texas as they're going to spawn back in their drone area. Hopefully they can make something Ooh, happen here. He gets punch. a melee punch, the gets two. Punch. Oh my god. Oh, and it's actually his teammate slightly takes him out trying to help him. Boy, you know, we could have seen a triple punch, maybe even the Quadra punch coming out, but he was unable to get that. Obviously his teammate get him. Going for the cheeky throw, unable to get it, goes wide right. That ball's gonna fall down. It's gonna be a little bit before that reset, so these teams are gonna have a little bit of a respite. They're gonna try and reset and get control of that drone. Still down there, we'll reset I'm sure any second now. North Texas really needs needs to step up right now. You have Rochette at 2-10 and, and Ninja at 4-13. and 13. They need to step up their game, you know, going into the second half if they really want to make an impact. You know, the only person who even was positive, not even positive anymore, was Skater, who we're looking at right now. And 
you know, 11 and 11, that's good enough. But when yeah. your team is playing worse than you, you know, when that's your best player, that's not great for you because you're not going to get scores. And of course, North Texas, you know, they were trying to get control of Greenhouse Lane and sort of spread around the map. But if you're losing this bad, you've got to just solidify your control of middle map. Now that that sentry's Ooh, gone, four, that down. four down there for U and M. That's <laughs> going to be their last opportunity to make something happen here. Possibly a two-point play. He's going to throw that drone out. Great play. Nonetheless, there's going to be two players challenging him, and he's going to fall. That was North Texas' last chance to make something happen on that first side. 12-0. and 0, um, It's a pretty large lead to be. I'm not going to say I'm not going to BS anybody here. This is a, a lot to work on for the second half is it quite amount of uh, possessions you're gonna need to do to come back from this looking at stats here of course you have one person with two kills on North Texas so that's not gonna help your squad at all and on the other side we have great slaying abilities of course make it bacon making all the object uh, objective happen with three carries for his team but now heading on to the next uh, the next side North Texas having that preferable side maybe they're gonna be able to put some more points on the board just like UNM did but with their slaying abilities that we saw in just their overall map control I really highly doubt it as slightly is already gonna jump on the drone Yep, slightly has a drone. I'll give it to Megan Bacon. Ooh, he gets. Oh, the double kill from Rochette. That was a solid. That was a headshot right into a punch, and he has one player to beat. He's going to try to outrun him. No, X Wheel will come down and get him, and he'll grab the drone from his team and reset it. He'll play that, and it'll be a nice opportunity for his team to reset to mid map. Enemy getting behind some players here. Uh, you know, you can tell their communication's not great since his teammate got killed and he didn't turn around. But just like that, slightly is already pushing in and making it 14 0. Oh, Skater with the Ripper, though, does take him out. I mean, that's about as useful, it looks like, as that's going to get. Unable to get Enemy, who's going to pick up another two-piece with Macon Bacon falling right in his trails with the drone. Ooh, one player goes through the melee, is unable to get it. That's Rochette trying to, you know, breathe some life into this team late into the game. Enemy has the drone. He's going to throw it in for another two points. That's 15-0. You know, four minutes, this is really make or break for North Texas. This is their last chance. You know, as we say that, enemy pulls out the Tempest. He's going to try to get some more, a lot of map control here in this mid, able to pick up one, and his team is just going to run this drone right in. Making Bacon has it, does find a player, gets the melee, and that's, yeah, that's a free score for him, 17-0. I mean, you just have to question, you know, the, the accuracy of these North Texas players. They're getting meleeed left and right. Right, and I mean, North Texas tried to overextend in that last opportunity there. You, they weren't even clearing their base, trying to go for the overextension, which could work in some ways if you jump right on that drone and go for the reset as soon as the other team scores, but they couldn't even do that, to be honest. And Texas A&M going to go for some more two-point plays here, make it big and clearing out the base for his team. He's currently 18 and 10, and enemy, of course, he was slaying absolutely beautifully on that first hard point. Currently 24 and 9, making bacon. I was gonna have that psychosis in hand. We've seen some cool psychosis plays this time, but he's not gonna opt to use it quite yet. Slightly, he's gonna have that heat wave ready, and he's also gonna try and put more points on the board here. Enemy leading the charge into that North Texas base. These players from North Texas trying to rotate back, but they're just absolutely getting shut down. Enemy Ooh, picking up a nice two piece, slightly getting the two point play in. 21 to Zip for yeah. AM. Let's stay on board with Enemy the here. Obviously, he's been the huge slayer here. Axe Wheel has the ball, and he's been their secondary slayer. You know, he's running that VMP long barrel grip, quick draw, very solid grip. There is another kill for him, 27 and 9. You know, he might be approaching 40 by the time this round is over, and Bacon Bacon has the bomb, and they've the ball, you know, they pretty much just set up this relay. It's going to be very hard for North Texas to do anything about it. Almost even gets melee there, and just like that, four down again against North Texas. They just can't even leave their base. Yeah, now they're trying to overextend once again. At least two of them trying to go back to the base slightly. Going to have the drone in hand, having some players, his teammates, try and clear out the base. Enemy again, these two pieces that enemy keeps getting, just clearing it out over and over and over again. Slightly even finishing off that final kill. Currently on a five kill streak. Making bacon with a four kill streak. Gonna pass the drone. Just gonna play a pass in the middle of the map. Whoa, whoa, back and forth there. Oh, Miguel! Finally, a drone possession in North Texas' favor. He's gonna go through Palace side, which is a, a good move to make. Of course, when A and M has complete control of this middle map, he's gonna be chased from a player actually right in front of him Ooh, who gets tempest. tempest right in the face. And of course, the drone is gonna fall to his death along with that body. Making bacon gonna recover that drone now. Yep, he's got the drone and pushing out, has a couple players to beat, yep. The Ripper comes in right behind him though, but Enemy has the Tempest and pushes up with him. Ball's still down, nobody grabbing it, Enemy doesn't want to grab it while his Tempest is still up. He's going to wait or let one of his teammates come and grab it. I mean, they're not 
really needing to play with any you know exact hurry. They're up 27 to zero. It's literally mathematically impossible for North Texas to even make a dent in the score. And just like that, slightly is standing right on top of the respawn point of the drone with no opposition. You just kind of have to question you know North Texas' ability to control the map when they're losing now 29 to zero with 45 seconds and slightly able to pick up two kills as his teammate slides right under his bullet. Solid movement there. Skater, <laughs> last one alive for his team again, and he's in his enemy base. Not gonna, you know, not much of a help when you don't even get the drone. You cannot keep that drone control at all. Slightly gonna be pushing up and just runs by. Whoa, no, the player does come around and see him or not. He's just running right by them. Breaking ankles left and right, 31 to zero. There it is, the 30 bomb we were looking for last series. Now Texas A&M is able to get it against North Texas, 15 seconds left. And North Texas gets a last drone possession, but Rochette just throws it away. There's nothing they can do. That is the easy, quick 3-0 for Texas A&M over North Texas. And they're going to be in a solid spot you know, after this first day of play. I saw they won their first match as well, so they're going to be 2-0. And, and you know, they're, I think they're going to be a team to watch out for in the rest of this tournament. Well, when you have somebody on your team that has a rocket launcher as their secondary, I mean, you can't really take that too seriously of course hopefully we're going to see uh, North Texas prepare a little bit more for their match next time around starting by getting the right specialist down second equipping the right weapons and attachments along with the perks <laughs> were a little bit questionable and then try and coordinate some strategy in an uplink they were doing well by trying to rotate back to the base trying to like at least realizing the other team is coming for the base they're rotating back when they're spawning out they're having some kind of map awareness but then they're not able to get any kills, so that's really how this 32-0 happened. But now 3-0 in favor of Texas A&M, in case you guys missed it. 250-7, 6-1, and now 32-0, so a little bit of a deja vu from our first matchup. Yeah. But don't give up hope on us in this league. We're going to have some great teams. We're going to have some great teams come up in this league and show you guys what real Call of Duty is all about. Yeah, this is you know just the round-robin kind of group stage. Uh, we're going to be moving into the top eight teams are going to go to a double elimination bracket. I believe two weekends from now is when that'll be going on. So that's when we'll probably be seeing the really most high, you know, velocity and intense Call of Duty action. And, you know, what we saw from North Texas is very similar to what we saw from RIT last series. The building box, the, the groundwork for some good strategies, for some good plays, you know, knowing when to overextend, knowing that map control. You know, we saw some very basic ideas of it it looked like you know like i said they had the basic ideas but they weren't able to execute it really and they both got 3-0 of course and uh clearly the teams to watch out for are texas a&m and i believe the other team was wayne, state, uh, wayne yeah. state so those teams looking well but of course if you got to play some people that know how to play the game a little bit i don't want to say those are the top teams quite yet or maybe even people that are that great i really want to see a proper matchup to really decide who's the top team coming coming into this league to be honest yeah uh, you know i think the first couple days are going to be you know these kind of slow Maybe, you know, one would call them stomps, uh, you know, 3-0 either way with very aggressive, you know, plays by the winning teams. And hopefully we'll see some, you know, better action later on. But, you know, it'll be really interesting to see what teams we're going to have getting into this bracket stage. Obviously, Wayne State and Texas A&M are two teams to look out for. And if you want to keep up with all of the matches that are going on tonight, like I've said, there are 39 teams signed up for this. So it's not... You know, these there are way more matches going on than just the ones we're able to cast. So go to avglcollege.org, click on the Black Ops 3 tab, and you can check out the standings, you can check out all the teams, the rosters, and the results of all the matches that are being played tonight. If you look, there are a ton. You know, we're just two people that aren't able to cast every single one of them, or else we'd be here till 7 a.m. You know, we have to start late. Try to accommodate these students after their classes. You know, we don't want people missing academics for Call of Duty, of course. You know, priorities, priorities. But that's going to do it for us for this first night. Just a couple of matches to get us started. You can follow us on Twitter. Uh, you know, tweet at us with feedback. Obviously, we're not, you know, we're no Mr. X and Maven. You know, we're not professional casters, but we're we're doing our best. We really want to hear your feedback, and we really want to hear your feedback on this league in general to really see how we can keep things going and, and make things better. So that's going to that's gonna do it for us tonight. Again, go to avglcollege.org to check out not only the Black Ops 3, but there's Rocket League, you know, League of Legends, Dota, so, Smite, so many games that you can go check out all the different college brackets for. And make sure you follow the AVGL stream so you're notified whenever they go live with these other games. So that's going to do it for us. For me and Jen, good night.
Good night.